Hey guys, welcome back to the Friday Vlog where we discuss activity that goes on here with the Buzzweaver channel. That includes things like current events, headlines that are in the news, pop culture, social media technology, and items of interest that come up during the week that allow us to have a little bit of a dialogue. If this is your first time here to the channel, welcome. If you are a returning viewer or a subscriber, I want to thank all of you guys for your continued support. In gaming news this week, I've released a new Let's Play video for Civilization VI as Kubla Khan, the grandson of Genghis Khan. On January the 28th, Thursday, the DLC dropped for Civilization VI, which introduced Kubla Khan, as well as Lady True, or Ba True of Vietnam. So looking forward to playing her as well. But we start off playing as Kubla Khan, and you can find that video up here in the top right-hand corner. All right, guys, we're starting it off with Wall Street Bets. You have probably heard all about what has happened here on Reddit. As regular Americans, men and women started investing in GameStop and AMC, which affected the hedge fund investors at Wall Street, which are, of course, part of the establishment. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details about the ins and the outs of what all happened or give you guys any sort of financial advice. This is not any sort of financial advice here as a prerequisite that I have to say because, of course, uh, like with medicine or medical, we always have to give a disclaimer when it comes to these sorts of things because, of course, investing does have risk. But nonetheless, of course, we have heard all about the Wall Street bets this week and they are continuing with their investments much to the chagrin and irritation of the establishment and their response from the establishment was of course to go to some of their establishment buddies which is the legacy mainstream media so what they were doing was since wall street was getting hammered by individuals investing in gamestop and amc driving up the stock and therefore causing them to lose their um trade or buying of stock so basically what they do is they bet on stocks to basically fail and so they borrow say for example the amount of a stock at a certain price and then if that stock loses then those people keep the amount they started with and anything below that is what they give back so basically what the Wall Street Bets was doing was they drove up the cost of um, of the GameStop stock cutting off and affecting the Wall Street investors which they were none too happy about so of course as I said they went directly to the mainstream media and, of course, to Congress and the, the traders and um, all of the different uh, money establishment people, investors, and so forth, but particularly the mainstream media because they needed to stop the hemorrhaging. So what they essentially did was they said, silver is the Reddit Army's next target. Will it tarnish their crusade against Wall Street? Now, this is a complete mischaracterization because, or a misdirection, I should say, because Reddit was not about to do any such thing. As a matter of fact, they even posted it here on Wall Street Bets sometime earlier this week, and um, I'm trying to uh, keep it family friendly, so I don't want to show you some of the headings, but suffice it to say that uh, they were on to what the media was trying to do. They were on to what Wall Street was trying to do, trying to divert them, trying to get them to purchase silver so that uh, these people that lost all their money could regain their money through silver so the reddit people were having none of that but i just wanted to kind of briefly go into that you probably heard a lot about it this week if you want to know more information or get more detailed information i'll leave a link below to one of tim one of tim's videos on it he he did several so you can either go to tim cast or tim pool if you want to look it up by youtube and you can see what he has covered on this topic during the week. But I mainly wanted to focus, of course, on the establishment itself because that's who we are now dealing with in this particular administration. Now, I don't mention Joe Biden that often, but when I say establishment, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, if you want to talk about media influence or influencer, you could probably look no further than Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who, of course, is giving credit here by CNN by saying she nailed it. Of course, she gets all the glowing and flattering articles as well as Joe Biden. Very much unlike what we saw with President Trump. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is a perfect example of a brand or what we as creators 
or Instagram models or anyone who works in social media knows the significance and importance of your brand. And just like with Jim Acosta, you know, when Jim Acosta, no one knew who Jim Acosta was when he f was was the uh, CNN uh, brief press room briefing a correspondent. No one knew who he was until he started injecting himself like many of the media did there at these press briefings. And Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is this, she's kind of like the second surrogate for the establishment. Now, I don't really want to go too much into the article if you guys want to know about what why she's being featured here. Well, she was giving her harrowing account, which she posted on Instagram on Monday night, uh, is a reminder of just how violent the capital insurrection was now the reason they had to use this language and we've talked about this before how the left basically hijacks our language redefine the language to fit and uh to fit their narrative so they had to use insurrection here because if they can't impeach the president they could go for the 14th amendment the 14th amendment section 3 says that that of course they can bar the president under that under the insurrection and sedition so that he can no longer run. So there is no particular mystery, ladies and gentlemen, as to why the media went with the word insurrection or the Democrats went with the word insurrection because this is part of the 14th Amendment that they may use against him. And again, we're having trouble with the uh, selecting. But nonetheless, so they had to go with insurrection and sedition so that they could use the 14th Amendment as a backup to impeachment which we are going to see. I, I really don't see it really happening. But again, like I said, because the left likes to hijack language, redefine it, and then put it out there with, uh, with their own emphasis, sarcasm, exaggeration, cynicism, however you want to phrase it, it's all about controlling the language because it's about information. And people keep asking me about, who is this establishment? Who is this establishment you keep talking about? Well, of course, the establishment is a combination of various individuals, one of them, of course, is one of those who ran for president, Mike Bloomberg, who spent $500 million just on his own campaign. But as you can see here, Mike Bloomberg commits $100 million to help Joe Biden win Florida. Now, you think about this. As much as the Democrats talk about helping out their constituents, where is all this money? Why don't they raise all this money? Why don't they raise the $600 million for their constituents then, if, if that's their major concern? Now, in preparation for the video here, I um, need to go back here and show you something specifically when I, when I talk about uh, the establishment. So when I say establishment, of course, I'm talking about individuals across the board here. For example, Alphabet, the University of California, U.S. government, Microsoft, and then, of course, Facebook and Apple. And if you guys have been part of the channel all this time, then you know my particular mantra, and that is that the Democrats worked alongside the mainstream media, the tech giants, the Trump detractors, and the special interests to ensure that everyone hated President Trump as much as they did. So here is a snapshot of the establishment. Not to mention, also, to, or also to mention, this from Dan Crenshaw. Wall Street spent over $700 million to back Joe Biden's run for president topping Trump's hall. So here you have it. Who's the establishment? Well, the Wall Street. And this is what was so curious to me during the week because I kept seeing individuals on the left in particular or those who were orange man bad, particularly those that I follow in gaming as a gamer, of course. Many of them uh, were always disparaging the president and here they were supporting the little guy. Now, I, I will say that the left and the right were both supporting everything that was going on by Wall Street Bets, but I had to quickly remind all of those orange man bad types that the establishment is who was being sought after by the Wall Street Bets. They were going after the establishment, the establishment of who they voted for. They voted not Trump, and not Trump is a vote for the establishment, but because now things are changing, you may have seen how many of those on the left that were there to be agitators, basically useful idiots for the Democrats, all those types that were on there every single day, orange man bad this, orange man bad that, the protesters and so forth that was going on. A lot of them are being kicked off of the internet. They're finally getting booted. We saw 71,000 Antifa kicked off of Twitter. Also, Facebook shutting down many of the progressives, 
and leftist and socialist sites, shutting them all down because they're cleaning house. Those individuals' usefulness has run out and they are no longer needed by the Democrats, which is basically the way they treated their voters. Once you voted for them, thank you very much. You know, go away. We're now where we want to be. So we'll consider your um, request later. So now that that uh, censorship has continued to kick in, and they're still dealing with the inf- they're still dealing with a lot of the uh, censorship and information that's going on because information is power. So how is it the administration is going to be dealing with this? How the Biden administration can help solve our reality crisis? How dystopian does that sound? These steps, experts say, could proud more could what prod more people to abandon the scourge of hoaxes and lies. Now, as Tim was saying about this particular writer, you know, this particular writer is known for his sensationalizing and exaggerations. But nonetheless, uh, I wanted to show you guys a section of it. Oh, it's pretty long, so I was trying to remember where it was. I think it was down here towards the bottom somewhere. So, enact a social stimulus and fix people's problems. Uh, The experts I spoke with warned that tech platforms alone couldn't bring back the millions of already radicalized Americans, nor is teaching media literacy a silver bullet to prevent dangerous ideas from taking hold so you can kind of see you know they go into the various groups and there was a section that i wanted to read from particularly oh yeah audit the algorithms now the algorithm has been manipulated quite often by youtube and twitter and even facebook so here you see an audit of the algorithm several experts recommended that the biden administration push for more for much more transparency into the inner workings of the black box algorithm that Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and other major platforms use to rank feeds, recommended content, and user or usher users into private groups, many of which have been responsible for amplifying conspiracy theories and extremist views. So here you're seeing now everybody wants to be able to know how to what the black box is doing because if you know what the black box is doing, then you can counter whatever the black box is doing. So that's why you hear me say that uh, you're getting some of my community uh, tab post because there is an inherent issue right now with the community tab with YouTube. So if you're utilizing that tab, you can reach a much wider audience either by design or a flaw or a bug in the YouTube algorithm that is allowing people to reach a wider audience with the community tab. So I've been utilizing that. So if you are a subscriber with notifications on and you've been wondering why you're getting those notifications, or you may even be wondering why you're getting notifications from people that you don't even follow or subscribe to, that is because there is a problem with that community tab. Now I'm getting a little long-winded here, but I wanted to point a lot of these things out. So here you have the dystopian idea that not only do we know that the left and the Democrats and the progressives try to hijack the language, here you have them trying to solve our reality crisis. In other words, they are the influencers. They're the ones you need to be listening to. And it, and it was different long t- a long time ago when there were only like the three major networks, ABC, CBS, and NBC. But now today, people can get information from all sorts of sources. Now, talking about the continuing arrogance of the administration as well as the establishment. I wanted to show you guys this uh, press briefing the other day from Jen Psaki. Now, I don't have anything against Jen Psaki, but this is a perfect example of the establishment with their snarky, sarcastic, condescending tone for anything that isn't either something they have created, they've come up with, or is part of their particular plan. Here is her response. I just want you guys to hear this. They ask whether the president has made a decision on keeping or keeping the scope of Space Force. Wow, Space Force. It's it's the plane of today. Um, It is an interesting question. Um, I am happy to check with our Space Force point of contact. I'm not sure who that is. I will find out and see if we have any update on that. Uh, Go ahead. She doesn't know who the contact is for the Space Force. Maybe she conveniently doesn't want to know who it is or name who it is. Ladies and gentlemen, talking about the Space Force in this condescending tone, she's had to dial it back now. She's had to walk all this back because the military is a family. Regardless of what branch you go into, the military is a family. This was an attack on the youngest member of that family, the Space Force. Now, because the Democrats didn't come up with this, because this will be a long-lasting 
fingerprint of the president, she probably had to come across with this very condescending, very sarcastic tone. Now, I don't have anything against Jen Psaki herself. I think this was a really bad PR move, or as the Democrats like to say, really bad optics for them. But nonetheless, guys, yeah, she basically, in a way, now remember, remember, if the if the Democrats can say insurrection and sedition, and, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez can talk about her terrifying moments and her harrowing bravery, despite the fact that she said she locked herself in the bathroom and then was uh, angry about a police officer who was just trying to help her, saying that he was mean and, and, and so forth and so on. But nonetheless, guys, the only person who has stood up to the establishment is right here. Oval Office of the former President of the United States of America, Donald Trump, the champion who stood up to the establishment, the man who was so hated by the MSM, Democrats, and Trump detractors, they were going to scare everyone into voting, not Trump. So there you have it, guys. That's the Friday vlog look, at least from this side. I hope you guys are liking the new format that we have here. I would encourage you now, if you haven't already, to click that like button. That is so vitally important. And I'll mention this in the closing. That is that I want to maintain a presence here on YouTube because it is the second largest search engine on the on the internet and individuals who do comment commentary like this need to reach those people because if we all move to alt tech that's where we all hang out that's where the black box algorithm whole focus is on right now people being able to create groups within the alt tech they're concerned about alt tech i would encourage you guys below this video to follow me on those alt techs or you can even follow me here on twitter but nonetheless guys this is kind of the briefing that i wanted to give you over this week's news concerning the direction of the establishment. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for this Friday vlog. Thank you so very much for all of your support, you guys on Parlor, Rumble, BitChute, and Odyssey. It is amazing to have you guys along helping out the channel, especially now during this time of the new administration with the particular censorship that we are experiencing. And the reason I am still on YouTube is because this is still the second largest search engine on the internet. And our sort of commentary are here, our conservative commentary needs to get out to the masses because if I just move just to alt tech, then it will be of course individuals like yourselves who support this channel and support this content. But to reach those masses guys, I still want to have a presence here on YouTube. So if you are following me here on YouTube or watching this on YouTube, then appearing there on the screen, that would be the channel icon to subscribe along with notifications and be aware selecting notifications will let you know when I make community posts as well, because people have been asking me about that, but those are there too. So I will see you guys right there behind that camera next week.